Football's right around the corner. Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. And with the NFL returning, DraftKings is giving new customers $200 in free bets instantly when you bet $1 or more on any football game. Listen up, because you don't want to miss this. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ART19 to receive $200 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any football game and get a free shot at a million top prize with your first deposit. That's promo code ART19 for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only, minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Before we start the show, here at The Thing Is, we want you and all of our listeners to have amazing sex, which is why I want to tell you about a popular sexual enhancer, the Promescent Delay Spray. It's been used by over a million men and is clinically proven to help you last longer in bed. It takes the edge off and sensitivity levels down so you don't have to worry about finishing too soon. There's no prescriptions, no mess, no pesky subscriptions required, just better sex guaranteed with a 60-day money-back policy. I mean, that's freaking awesome. As you listen to the show, um, you all know, um, Maddie um, doesn't have a whole lot of sex. I don't have a whole lot of sex, both for very different reasons. But it's important to both of us that our guests and our listeners live a very different life <laughs> than we live. See what the buzz is about for yourself and grab a bottle along with all your sexual wellness products from specially formulated arousal gels to supplements and so much more in one trusted spot that ships fast and discreet. So go to permescent.com. There's no promo code needed and they offer free shipping and a 60 day money back guarantee. So you're not losing out on anything. You can only gain by trying Promescent products, especially Promescent Delay Spray. Once more, go to promescent.com. That's P-R-O-M-E-S-C-E-N-T.com. And they've got an assortment of products to enhance your sex life. So give it a try and let's start the show. Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. guys, this is Shannon. You're listening to The Thing Is. Thank you for coming back to join us. I'm here as always with my lovely co-host, Maddie. What was that? I didn't like the ding? It wasn't a good ding? No, I feel like it was very weak. It felt faint. It, it was a little low. A little low in the mix. Yeah. Hello, Shannon. You were looking uh, exorbitant this evening. <laughs> exorbitant. Does that mean well, like can absorb a lot of liquid? Absorbent. If, if it does mean it, then I fucking nailed it. Yeah. You got to be dry at this point. What? Three years and fucking three years in and change. See, see, but like, you know, like with a sponge where if it's too dry, it like yep. can't absorb liquid anymore. I've never once heard of that in my life. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe I made it up. Anyway, <laughs> let's introduce our guest. <laughs> Joining us today, comedian and host of the American Loser podcast it is KP Burke. Welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me. Thank you for coming on. Um, we have a couple of things before we get into the show. Just stupid things that pop into my mind during the week, and I jot them down to uh, pose to the group. Pose to the group. Yeah, that's right, I think. Doesn't I, don't seem know. I right. still don't know what exorbitant <laughs> means. <laughs> I feel like exorbitant amount of money. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot. It feels like a lot. Which yeah, so that's not compliment. nice. I feel no, like it's not a compliment. I feel like you're calling not. me fat. <laughs> It sounds like complimentary, though, right? That's got to count for something. Well, this actually leads into my my question mm -hmm. for the group. So I was thinking about this earlier this week, that if you want to compliment a girl, there are so many acceptable words. And it's funny because you you can't seem to land on any of them at the beginning of every episode. But you can say like pretty, beautiful, yeah. gorgeous. I don't stunning. get a lot of practice at home, so <laughs> really? not, not a whole lot to work with around here. Yeah. You know? I got my trump card word. I'll tell you that much. Your what is it? The, the trump card word for me is oh uh, please do. No, never mind. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> I was supposed to fade into the mix. <laughs> no, it's uh the, the word I've always found that is instantly endearing is if you tell a girl that she's lovely. Mm. I go with lovely a lot, but I feel like it's what Lovely's my grandmother used one. to say it. I say a lot of things my grandmother used to say. You yeah, know? I do too, but mostly about um uh, uh, ethnic populations. <laughs> 
Yeah, all right, we're gonna get along. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I feel like if if it were coming from a guy who I like and who I want to know likes me, I don't know that lovely would seal that in. To me, lovely feels like a deep into a relationship word. Like I'm, I've 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 like I exhausted all other options for compliments by this point. I'll go with lovely. You know, it's a safe word for me because I can, if, uh, if you green light me after I say lovely, then I can go. And then if you are not responsive, then it's just a nice compliment. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that, that's my get out of jail free card. I really, I like, <clears throat> what, what were you going to say? No, it's, I was going to say, like, it's like old guys with like honey, you know, deer. But that's, those are like term, that's like a, like a nickname-ish type of thing. It's not a compliment. Yeah. I still feel like they're trying to fuck though. You know, like I don't trust these old guys that, going to the hospital that Aaron works at. Oh, is creeps. that what this is coming back to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's exorbitant over there. <laughs> yeah, taking a lot of fluids, COVID related. <laughs> I like I like gorgeous. I feel like mm. that's a that's a really nice one. Like that one yeah. hits me in a nice way. Beautiful is like it's too that's too easy, like too much of a go-to one. But my, my, that's not my question. My question is what, or do you guys not even care? Like what is an acceptable thing at complimentary towards a man? Cause I feel like handsome is something I would say to my nephew, like, Oh, you look so handsome today. Yeah. Like, I don't know how that lands on a guy's ears. I take a uh, beggars can't be choosers approach to compliments <laughs> where it's like, I'll take whatever you got. I'll take lovely. I'll take exorbitant. If you say it with a smile. That's a good one. I like that. I got called, um, um, I got called powerful once, which was uh, unexpected. So that's probably why it stuck out. That's a good one. That really yeah, is. It's a- <laughs> no one's even come close to calling me powerful. <laughs> Closest uh, I've gotten was penis. That- <laughs> so, but if a girl, uh, if a girl says to you, but I guess I, if a girl calls you handsome, are you just not going to care because she's saying something nice? Or is that a weird thing to, to be called? Uh, I'll tell you what, where, um, I, I, cause I, I feel like you're East coast, right? Mm-hmm. So where'd you grow up in Brooklyn? In, that's what I thought. So, uh, there's a thing where like, cause I, I was living down South when I was in the military for a while. So if a girl gives you any sort of a compliment down there, that is their first move. That's the closest they'll get. So, you're kind of already in on that. So girls can be more forward on the East coast. And then you're not quite sure if it like, like it's, it's kind of fun, the dynamic between those two things. But if a girl's complimenting me up here, I was like, Oh, I, I like your aggressive thing. We can figure something out now. You know? Hmm. hmm. I see. I'll proceed. That's interesting because I'm trying to think of now myself. And I do feel like unless I'm backpedaling myself out of something that I'm having to compliment somebody, like if I'm making where if I like say something and I accidentally insult, like let's say you, for example, Maddie, and then I backpedal myself out of it. Never once thought of by accident. <laughs> or with like if I'm doing it without being like I'm not meaning to be so mean with yeah, it, yeah. and then I have to say a compliment. But if I'm just coming up with a compliment, I would say that that may be a first step into that direction with me because I can't think huh. of times where I, I don't if know. You, if you accidentally like hurt someone's feelings. No, not that part. No, not that part. Uh, not that part of it. Just that I'm saying if I'm being if I'm giving a compliment without me backpedaling out of something. Oh, I understand. OK, I got you. Yeah. But I don't really know what my move is because I don't know how to be like if I like a new person, I don't know how to like be a person. And so like there's no moves. I'm just trying to like not be the most retarded person in the world. Yeah, that's a it's a good. um it's a good line to start at. That's where I live my life. Just try not to be the worst guy in the room. You know, like find I've a real been problem. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've only been around Shannon a couple of times. And every time like it, it's and there's not even a flirtation going. It's just me sitting there and I look at her. I'm like, don't fart. Don't fart. Don't fart. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I appreciate that. You know, it's amazing how many guys that I'm around regularly and how few farts actually. Do you understand happen. the opposite? I, I'm like, please fart. Please have a fart. <laughs> for the love of God, we're in an enclosed area for please. I don't know if you ever have farted in front of me. No, I never have them around you. I think my <laughs> asshole's nervous. 
I'm fucking loading up on chili and Hagen does. I think the the guy Nothing. I've heard far the most out of my whole life has been Dan Soder. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> he just does not care. Like he rips <laughs> them wherever. He's got good rips. That's good. I That's nice to know. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a fan of the you know the bodily stuff in front of anybody else ever. Really. <sighs> really. No. What I live we've, for. we've talked we've talked about this i've never like i've never in a relationship like i have never farted they've never farted in front of me it's just uh you know this doesn't have to be part of this yeah you're not <laughs> supposed to hold it in though i heard it rots your guts yeah but you can figure out other ways but like oh be right back i gotta run to the store <laughs> so something. jam this big pen into my fucking intestines <laughs> let some air out for you i don't want to be rude honey um kp are you a person that is Everything goes in a relationship, farting, pooping with the door open. Down the road, yes. Up front, though, I am, I swear I used to like hide candles around places to light them in case of something. <laughs> so there's a lot of, yeah, I, I get, uh, I, I, I fall in love hard. So it's like, um, you don't even think that these people are capable of those things. That's the pedestal you put them on. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, yeah, you get super self conscious. It'll like, you know, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm probably, I'm borderline like a surgeon, you know, going in, like doing the scrub beforehand, before I even go see the person, mm -hmm. like the first maybe month or two. After that, it starts getting a little bit more relaxed. And then eventually the longest relationship I was in four and a half years, it was like, there was no mystery left. And on both, that's on both sides, the girl too. I think I, you're right on that. I would say that's <laughs> <laughs> and meaning that the, the girl, like she's also far farting. It's, it's, she sure is. Has everything been for on a while. both sides. <laughs> no. <laughs> because some, I mean, some like let's say like Lewis J. Gomez, for example. I don't think he is ever okay with knowing that a girl does any of those things. I'm He's pretty sure. Such a fruit sometimes. Like he doesn't like blood or you know what I mean? Like he's like girly with weird shit. So he doesn't like a fart. I, mean, I don't, I don't like it so. either. It really is gross. It's disgusting. I mean, and when they stink bad, you're like, what am I doing here? <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, all right, yeah, a little proud of you. I'll tell you, if a girl farts in front of me and it just makes a sound, there's something cute and disarming about that. Like we shared a moment. Yeah. But if it smells, I'm going to judge the shit out of you. <laughs> How do you feel about a girl who silently farts in the car as you're dropping them off and then you notice it as you're a half mile down the road. Would you be nice to your girlfriend? I hate her. She's been doing this to me for almost 18 fucking years now. She stinks. She's literally, she smells. Cause you 18 years you're with this. Jim? Yeah. I keep telling her like, listen, Dude. either give me a warning or fucking or laugh about it. Cause you trying to hide it. And then stinking is really starting to bug me. That's love, dude. Ugh. It is love. Hate her. I was just looking at I just took a moment before when I was rushing around trying to get ready. By the way, I never come in on Fridays in a good mood. <laughs> I am yeah. always furious by the time it comes to record the show because the week has just beaten me down and I'm like always rushing and trying to get everything done. And whenever I come into this chat room here, I'm always furious, not at anybody, just at my life. But as I was running around and I stopped and I looked at your save the date on my refrigerator mm -hmm. and I took a moment and I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> oh, really? yes. I'm just I'm just happy that some people experience love in their life. A few cool. days after we sent them out, I was like, I started smiling, looking at them there because I had, you know, the extras on the, the counter there. She's like, what are you smiling about? I was like, my face is on Shannon's fridge. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> she couldn't possibly <laughs> like it. <laughs> and I started thinking about all the fridges I'm on just ruining their day. <laughs> so I'm kind of bummed out that you liked it. You, you know? do, because I like love. They it's like a right. mythical, it's a mythical thing. It would be like if, for example, you had proof that a ghost existed <laughs> and there was evidence mm. of that in my refrigerator. It's like, ah, uh, people can can love and, and share it together. It's cute. I'm going to die tragically. I know it. This is going <laughs> to oh, be the fucking, God. this is going to be the podcast they go back to and they're like, oh, look, everyone was on board. Things were going so well. <laughs> he was so young and handsome. So, so and excited for the wedding. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of weddings, I was at one last weekend and this is just like a stupid, weird thing. First of all, I didn't know anybody there. And as soon as I get there, we sit near this like group of people. There's one chick in this group of guys. She's sitting down. So I go and sit down next to her because I was wearing the most uncomfortable shoes in the whole wide world. So I needed the least amount of time standing as possible. And she's smoking a Newport. And the second I sat down, she goes and I, Maddie, just just hold off for one second. She automatically goes into like anti-vax diatribe, mm -hmm. but she's like, I'm not going to put this shit into my body and uh, and go sterile and blah, blah, blah. As she's smoking a Newport. Yeah. It's just it's just I mean, it was, but I, I, I kept my mouth shut because I'm not sure there's no there's no really having a conversation, you know, about these things. So I'm just like, oh, that's hmm. That's no, but mm -hmm. that like deserves a like. Where you you they, you make them notice you staring at the cigarette and you go <laughs> really <laughs> and then you just walk away you're done like that you've done your like good deed for the day you've made an asshole feel like a bit of an asshole you know in a Newport no less it's like they're fucking they don't even let black people buy those things oh well, that wasn't the part but that's not what I was getting to at the wedding <laughs> so oh. that was that was just how it started and I wanted to text Ralph so badly because we always talk about getting stuck in these conversations but I couldn't do it without being seen and then yeah. anyway so we're sitting at the table and we start talking about um like psychedelics came up at the table and so I was talking about we had Shane Moss on last week and I was talking about the conversation and then um everyone kind of like breaks for a little bit leaves the table comes back and another guy at the table was like did you used to work on Tim Dillon's podcast? And I was like, yeah, but this is like five years ago. Yeah, yeah. And like how he put two and two together that it was me was crazy of like of all the shows that I do now. And he remembers the show that I worked on for like six months, five years ago. It was just really. Yeah, how did he put that together? I, I guess because oh, I was talking about podcasts and oh. maybe then he heard my it, it took him a second to like hear my voice and my name and then right. put it together. But that's OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that wow. was fun. Big and then show, huh? Yeah. And that's his old show. But anyway, oh. last thing. So speaking of psychedelics, this is all working together really well. Uh -oh. I had someone just DM'd me uh, smooth and cat. I don't know how to say his his handle. It's something like that. Smooth and cat. I'm probably doing it wrong. It probably means something and I'm saying it wrong. I don't, I don't know. know what that could possibly mean. Um, like Indica, he's smooth Indica cat. Maybe. Unless he's like, unless he fucks cats and he's like, I go smooth into the cat. I don't think so because he sends me right fun. Into him. <laughs> he sends me fun cat videos all the time. So I hope not. Oh boy. Are they screaming in pain? <laughs> no, they're cute <laughs> videos. So he was telling me about Ch Changa. I think would be how it's pronounced. And it, it, some, and I just, I just read this very quickly before we came on air. So I haven't really looked into it yet, but he said that it's like, it has DMT in it and that it's kind of like the effects of it last only for a couple of minutes and you can extend it as you're smoking it. So it's like, if you want it to last longer, then you keep puffing at it. And if you want it to stop, then you stop smoking. And they're supposed to get like the visuals and all of that that you get from psychedelics. Have you ever heard of this? Anybody? I've no, no, the only Ooh. Changa I'm familiar with is the Chimmy variety. And I don't understand how it could have a, uh, I don't understand how it could have the same effects as DMT when like, I think the whole idea of DMT is you smoke so much that you just shut off and you stop working. So how are you smoking it as you go? You know? Okay, but with ayahuasca, like that's kind of just like a drawn out like DMT is like, you know, shove it all in and do it all at once where yeah. ayahuasca is like a longer, slower process. So maybe mm -hmm. this is some sort of combination of the two things like an in between. Yeah. Are you a psychedelic guy at all, KP? I am. I, I think that they were um, a huge, huge moment for me. First drug I ever did was mushrooms. Actually, I never even smoked pot before that. Hmm. And you're a fan. It's a, what's that? And you're a fan. Oh, big, big fan. Mushrooms is probably something you got to do every six months to keep yourself regular. Uh, yeah. Acid probably about a dozen times. And then um, I fucked up real good on Morning Glory. I don't know if you guys ever did that. Never heard of flower? it. Flower? I know it's uh, a yeah, flower. So, yeah, it, uh, the way it was broken down to me, and I could be completely wrong, um, is that uh, LSD is, um, that's the, the chemical made, uh, obviously, version of acid. The naturally occurring compound is LSA. Mm -hmm. And that exists in the morning glory seat. So that would be like what 
uh, Native American Plains Indians would be uh, taking for like their vision quests and shit. And um, so I remember doing it and somebody told me like, you take 200 seeds of this, you can buy them on Amazon too. <laughs> um, I bought them on Amazon, put them in a blender with orange juice and drank the 200 seeds because they said that's a pretty strong trip. And then um, I wound up puking my guts out like 20 minutes later. And I said, you know what? Maybe I needed to do um, like a different, not orange juice or something. I blame the mixer, not the compound. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I set this time aside. I'm free for the next couple of days because for acid, you know, you always want to have at least a day to figure your shit out. And um, I go ahead and I put 200 more seeds in because I wanted to have that pretty strong trip, uh, but not too crazy. And I mixed it with pomegranate juice. That went down. Then I started puking again. And then I Googled it. And somebody goes uh, in one of the, the Reddit things, he goes, yeah, you're supposed to throw up. So you like pretty much I'm realizing I just double dosed myself. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I died for a minute and watched my like I stood over my own body. I watched it like in my in the spiritual sense. I watched like the EMTs come find me and stuff. I was it was pretty nuts. I was uh, my dog loved it. He just got pet for the next five hours. But wait, wait. OK, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> so first of all, I apologize if you're hearing the thunder to the listeners in my background. It's really freaking loud. But um, so did you is this just a feeling that you had or did you really have EMTs come? No. OK, uh, good question. I should have been more specific. Uh, I had an out of body experience in which I got up out of my bed because I was trying to go to sleep on it. I got it. OK, it's the hardest feeling ever. And then I'm walking around and it was like, oh, I'm, I might be dead. This is like how they always show it in the movies. And um, in my head, I was like thinking the EMTs are going to be coming in and working on me soon and stuff. And then you, are you trying to like say goodbye to your family and stuff like that. It was it was definitely as close to a bad trip as you could have. Um, and that lasted for about a day and a half until I wound up, uh, you know, there were pleasant moments to it and then really rough moments to it. But the scariest thing was that uh, my dog at one point appeared to me as an old man. And, uh, and that was like pretty trippy. And then once I was myself again, about 72 hours later, I was on uh, one of those, uh, remember that Arrowhead website? No. No. Arrowhead, E R O. Oh, yes. Yeah, with all the drug facts on it? Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I went on there and I was reading someone's experience with Morning Glory and they had almost to a T the same experience I had. And I was like, well, this is just bizarre. I thought I had some... Uh, ridiculous universe defining moment and it's just mm. like no nah, dude you're a reboot so. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys let's take one quick moment to talk about one of our longest running sponsors that is yo kratom for fans of the show over the age of 21 i want to tell you about yo kratom the home of the 60 dollar kilo that's right for just 60 dollars, you can get a full kilo of kratom if you're currently a fan of kratom you can be getting it from our pretty much, I'm pretty sure the longest running sponsor, Yo Kratom for just $60 a kilo. If you're not a fan of Kratom, ignore this ad. This is not for you. If you are, um, this is going to make a big difference in your life. You're going to be able to get high quality Kratom for just 60 bucks a kilo. Um, it's time to stop overpaying or having to go to corner stores or gas stations to get what you're looking for. You probably already know if you're stuck having to go to some local store, you have no idea what kind of strains they're going to have, um, what the quality is of whatever crazy brands they have available. So you're not really in control of what you're purchasing, which is much different than at Yo Kratom. At Yo Kratom, you can just take a look right now at their website, yokratom.com, and they have all types of strains. They even have a combination strain called Trainwreck, which is my favorite one. They have powders, uh, tinctures, capsules, everything that you could possibly want is at yokratom.com. These guys are one of the biggest Kratom wholesalers and they created yokratom.com so that you can buy directly at incredible prices. Last time, yokratom.com, home of the $60 kilo. Go check them out. Um, all right, let's get back into it. All right. I'm going to, I have more questions about that, but I'm going to hold it for our last segment. I'm going to hold on to that. Um, gotcha. Okay, hold on. I'm just making sure. I, oh, last thing, uh, the, the thing incidents that I had, and this is probably really stupid, but I have to, of course, bring it up on the show. So um, what we call coincidences that that kind of surround the show, we call them a, the thing incidents. And um, so I was we were recording an episode of the SDR show with Carrot Top. So spoiler alert, Carrot Top is going to be on the SDR show soon. It hasn't aired yet. And 
uh, maybe like 13 years ago, I was in Vegas with a, a bunch of girls. We went there for Halloween weekend and we kept seeing, we stayed in, I think the Luxor, which is where Carrot Top was doing his residency at the time. And his posters were everywhere. And I was like, oh my God, we have to go see. I loved it. I was all bad because he was all big and jacked back then. <laughs> I was on board. So, uh, so like, really? my friends, like Carrot Top? There's something about the whole thing. At There's the time. nothing about Carrot Top that's attractive. This is a long time ago. There was something right, about ahead. it. There was just something about it. So my friend would like take picture, like they would take a picture of like me with the posters, whatever. This is 100 years ago. During this same trip, this is my first time, I think, going to Vegas. And uh, I just know that like the desert has scorpions. Mm -hmm. So anytime we would go back to our hotel room, I would make everybody shake out their shoes to make sure there were no scorpions in our shoes in like Wait, the 15th floor of a hotel. <laughs> Right when you got back, you're saying when you got back to the hotel, you'd have them do this. Yeah. Anytime though, we... So they wouldn't have noticed that they were in the shoes when they were wearing them. No, like the shoes, like in the room, like okay, before you put your shoes. shoes. Yeah. Before oh, okay. you put your shoes right. on, make sure to like bring it out and make sure there's no scorpions gotcha. in there. OK, fair enough. So this, OK, so this is all like the information that you need beforehand. Uh. So SDR Carrot Top was on. And so as he's on, I'm like texting my friend that I went on this trip with. And I was like, oh, and she hates him. So she was like, I was like, oh, you never guess who's on SDR, whatever. And so I'm texting her about it while they're interviewing him. And then he's talking about how he just added a new prop to his act. Uh -huh. And it's clear shoes because he was recently bit by a scorpion. And now he thinks clear shoes should be a thing so that scorpions can't bite you in your shoes. It's a, <laughs> it's a little bit of a coincidence, right? Yeah, yeah, I'd probably be a little bit freaked out by it if it happened to me. Although the, since it didn't happen to me, I can be a little bit more rational about it. And it's probably <laughs> a huge problem in the desert where yeah. scorpions, tarantulas, or like I'd call them uh, tarantulas. I think it's a Spanish call. Why right? are you doing that? Why? I don't know. It's tarantula, <laughs> isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's it. Oh, yeah, that no, that's thing. a, that's a thing. little something. Yo, speaking of feet, all right, I got a quick question before we move on. <laughs> when you guys shower, all right, do you wash your feet every time you shower? Yes, I do. I mean, and how ridiculous is, like, of a question is that? You know what I mean? Wash your feet in the shower? Yeah, like every time. Like some at the bottom of them? Uh, yep. I'll tell you what, it's like, uh, it's special occasion. Really? All right. Well, maybe I'm a fruit. But I got three other friends. I just found out. They're like, oh, no, no. I wash my feet every other day. Three of them. Three people out of the four that were standing there. Meaning that they take a shower every day, but skip their feet every other time? Yeah. And they're like, no, no, they don't get that sweaty. I'm like, yeah, they do. And also, how much fucking time are you saving a day? Wash your feet, man. I think I can understand like at least a man's logic behind this where there where where a guy would be like, well, the soap in the water is hitting it. Yeah. When I, I was guess. 12, I saw a black comic on uh, Comedy Central fucking presents do a bit that was exactly the same thing. It's like, oh, my, my feet are, I'm in the soapy, I'm in the soapy water. And I was like, oh, that's good logic. So I, I carried that with me for a few years. But then I became an adult and I was trying to like be around <laughs> girls and not have my feet smell like a fucking asshole. So I wash my feet every day. Yeah, Maybe I that, use I my loofah. It's like it's part of that. I can't whole do that. Process. I use the loofah. It's too ticklish. I can't do a <laughs> loofah on the bottom of my feet. I can't even use a washcloth. <laughs> it ain't happening. I'll fucking I'll fall. When I was in the military, you used to take showers with um, you'd have uh, like flip flops on mm -hmm. because nobody you didn't want to. Yeah, not to be gross, but. Uh, there's a lot of uh, nefarious characters in the military that would piss or maybe do something worse in the shower. Mm. So uh, from boot camp on, uh, especially when you're overseas or doing field exercises, you always, uh, always had to have flip flops on. So it was like when I would have the flip flops on, then I would do them every day. And then without them, unfortunately, that black comic makes a lot of sense to me. So apparently I'm gross <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm a foot washer. That's <laughs> I mean, especially if, I mean, people's body chemistries are different and some people are more predisposed to having smelly feet. So just, if you, if you're more predisposed to having smelly feet, then you should be washing them like deeply. I don't even think my feet don't even smell. Like they probably would never smell all that bad. Right? I had a friend when I was younger, his feet smelled like Fritos all the time. We'd have sleepovers and they'd be like, smell my feet. And I'd be like, oh, it smells like Fritos. But now it's, I don't know. I wash my feet every day, every day, sometimes twice a day. Outside of the shower? No. 
in the shower. If I take two showers, I wash my feet twice. I'm in there. What am I doing? I wash inside my asshole. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Which is pretty much outside anyway. Yeah, that may have led to a lot of the problems I have. Now, like, <laughs> yeah. I've been thinking about that a lot lately, actually. <laughs> it's like, maybe I ruined my own asshole. It's clean, though. Okay. All right. Okay. We've done uh, more talking before getting into the questions than I intended. Um, <clears throat> okay. So we're getting into now the official questions, KP. So the, typically, the first question that we ask new guests on the show is for you to tell us a story about either your weirdest date experience or weirdest sexual experience, meaning something like went weirdly wrong. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I got the email ahead of time. You run a good show over here. So I was prepared. Thank I want to be a good guest. Um, so uh, I was with a girl for four and a half years. Uh, we wound up breaking it off. Um, I moved back to uh, uh, Jersey. I was in the Navy. I was stationed down in Jacksonville, Florida. I bought a house and it was like a whole legal battle. I was about as depressed as I've ever been. So literally it was probably a six month period before I could even like think about talking to a girl again. And uh, the first girl, the first girl that I hooked up with uh, after we were starting to kind of date a little bit. And the first time that we had sex, it was the first time I had to wear a condom again mm -hmm. in about, um, I would say, I probably hadn't worn a condom in at least five years at that point. So um, I didn't know what to do on that one. And she made me wear the condom because uh, she worked, um, her company lost their insurance when Obamacare came through. So literally that dude cock blocked me for a minute. <laughs> um, but I wind up uh, putting the condom on. I, I didn't know what to do. I'm putting the condom on. I was like, oh, this, this feels terrible, whatever. I'm getting nervous about it. You know, uh, I'm, I'm stuttering at the gates a little bit. And then finally it starts to feel really, really good. And I was like, all right, cool. We're back in it. And then um, I finish. She's having a good time. I'm having a good time. And then uh, we can't find the condom. <laughs> and uh, apparently in, uh, the, the, in my, you know, I'm Irish. I probably didn't need to buy a Magnum, but I just wanted to feel good about myself. <laughs> So um, I went ahead and uh, I, I, I'm sure we're allowed to curse or whatever on here. Right? I just want to yeah. be fair to you. Okay. I fucked the condom into her. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and this chick was hardcore. She's like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You know, we're both trying to like Google it on our phones yeah. to see what we're supposed to do. Um, this chick was so cool. She, we wound up hooking up again the next night. I stayed over two more nights. And then uh, I, cause she was trying to get into her doctor, but it was the weekend. And then finally, um, I got, uh, we got her into the doctor and I offered to pay for it, like to, the, the processor. And uh, literally it was that she went to her gynecologist and the gynecologist had to like pull it out. And it was like, uh, <laughs> it pretty much ended the relationship right yeah. there um, on the nose. But yeah, that, that's about as embarrassing as it's gotten because uh, then it was sitting there waiting for three. It was almost like for a moment uh, we were dealing with a pregnancy scare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just, it was the condom was the baby. That was the thing, so. But, but did you guys, do, was there any attempt made by the two of you to get it out? Or you were just like, there's nothing we can do. Let's wait till yeah. she can get to the doctor. I'm starting to pick she, up on that. Uh, not really taking the whole no man left behind approach to things, you know? Like, no, no, that's <laughs> it. That's somebody else's problem now. We're going to leave that guy in there. It was, uh, I'll tell you what, it would have been terrifying for her because, um, you know, I, I, I do a lot of manual labor jobs. So I was like, I bet you I got something in the truck. You'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> you get one of those fucking the thing you push, like the claws come out to grab. That'd have been perfect. I don't think yeah, uh, she was a character. And this is the funniest part. She was uh, she took um, her cell phone and was trying to inspect herself over the toilet with the cell phone to see if she um, <sighs> uh, if she could find it herself. And it was like, you know, it, it was it was amusing. You know, nowadays it would just be an OnlyFans account. But, <laughs> but also, I mean, uh, you guys made it through like this first initial realizing that it happened. And yeah. then days after you would think that that would have like, you know, a little bonding over that thing and that you would have lasted past the extraction. So the question was about, you know, you guys lasted past the initial noticing it happened, got past there and then days passed, then the extraction and then you guys didn't make it past that. That just seems weird. I wanted you to be right very badly. Uh, and then unfortunately in the forced kind of guilt time that we were extra time we were spending together because I felt bad about ah. this. Uh, we kind of just sat there and realized we're like, oh, maybe this we hate each other. <laughs> you know, maybe we don't need to hang out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. 
which is hilarious because I'm adopted. So I think that's how my biological parents. <laughs> Damn it. Too. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I really want to know what comes after because I was adopted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so what's funny about that is because you were adopted. Yeah, because I was adopted, like I sat there. I wonder if that's what my biological parents were like, too. Or they're like, oh, we just hooked up. This is a nice girl. Now she's pregnant. But I had a little too much time to spend with her that maybe I don't want to make this my entire life. And they decided to put me up for adoption. I'm comparing myself to the condom in this sense, which is not a great motivator for me. <laughs> no, it's also a bummer. It was, but you know, it worked out pretty good. I mean, it's, it is kind of like a good thing because you just like fast forwarded past like a lot of time you probably would have wasted dating her and you just got to the conclusion faster. <laughs> I like your positive spin on this. <laughs> yeah, you really made him, the, you made him the good guy in all this. Meanwhile, he's the one who's like, Oh, wow, this got awesome all of a sudden. You know, he doesn't notice the condom comes off. Like, oh, wow, this sucked for a while, but maybe I just had to, you know, warm up to it a little. You know, I had to break it in a little, like a new pair of shoes. I want to call her and let her know I'm a hero. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we're going to move on to the next segment now, which is bad things. This is where we talk about fight stories, physical altercations, and if you've been in more than one fight, then the most memorable one. Uh, I could either tell you about the fist fight I had on my ship in the Navy, uh, or I can tell you about my high school nemesis. I mean, I'm, I would like to hear both of them. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll go, we'll go uh, cliff notes. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll be expedient here. Um, so in the Navy, when you go out to sea, I was in during the Obama administration and it's not a knock on them, but the budget was lower. So we weren't getting a whole lot of port visits. We would just be floating out at sea for 90 days at a time. And, uh, when you don't get to do that and you're just stuck with these people for 90 days, you start getting on everybody's nerves real bad. And, uh, one of the guys I worked with, and I, I legally can't say his name. Um, we're still friends, good people. I'm friends with his family and stuff, but, uh, he and I, classic uh, little Italian dude uh, with a, a Napoleon kind of a complex. And um, he, uh, oh, he's not, yeah, it was, it was nuts. Um, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Sure. I look like, a, I've walked into buildings before in Manhattan, the way I look and everyone's like, oh, is someone being towed? <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're on the ship. We're about like, uh, I guess like 60 or 70 days in. And the key is that if you've hit 90 days, they give you family separation pay. So that that's like a nice incentive. But because that was, again, the, the cheaper budget, we'd stay out for like 85 days, then come back in, then go back out. So it was brutal. Um, and uh, me and this dude wound up getting into it uh, a couple of times. And he was always talking shit. He was, and he, he, the dude was from Connecticut. He had a rough background and stuff. And uh, I'm a little bit of a smart ass. And I kept one day he was telling me, he goes, one of these days I'm just going to fuck you up, Burke. And I sat there and I said, uh, I gave him like, it was almost like Mr. Blonde and Reservoir Dogs. I was just sitting there and I was like, you know, you talk all this shit and just nothing ever seems to happen. And uh, when you leave a line like that there, you guarantee <laughs> something's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we're in the general workshop. He goes, uh, meet me in the birthing. That's where all of our uh, racks are, where everybody sleeps. And he goes, birthing, five minutes. And he walks out and then I walk out over there. Now I'm thinking we're just getting like getting to a shouting match or whatever. And I walk down there and I'm standing there and I'm waiting. And uh, I got a wrestling background from high school. I'm not, I'm not a tough dude or anything like that, but I, I've always held my own. Um, and so this guy walks out, he had a amateur boxing background. I found out. And um, so the, the last part that we heard clearly was that you found out that he had an amateur boxing background. Gotcha. And apologies to your listeners and stuff here, too. Uh, unfortunately, I you guys were so good to me, too, that I'm, I'm literally driving to Philly. I'm working with Bobby Kelly all weekend. And it came up last minute. So I appreciate you making moving mountains for me here. And I, I it's my fault. The connection's shitty. No, we, we appreciate you doing this while you're doing the drive. We'll make yeah. it work. We're hoping for a crash. Let's be honest. Shut That's up. What... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he had a, a little bit of an amateur 
amateur boxing background. He was always telling us that he uh, used to compete in uh, back in you know Connecticut and stuff like that. And I think he exaggerated a little bit because he comes up to me and he starts shoving me down in the birthing. Like, I think we're, he just starts shoving me, like screaming, yeah, what in my face, what's your problem, blah, blah, blah. And um, I don't know why I have no boxing background whatsoever. I just left hook the shit out of him. And mm. uh, so he, that happens. Uh, then he, he dives on me and then my wrestling thing kicks in. So I grab him, I'm, I'm in control. He's, uh, he's over my uh, shoulder and I'm, I ram him into the couch and then he starts rabbit punching the top of my head, like as best as he can. Mm-hmm. And then um, we're, we're only for about a good minute. And then everybody else on the ship separates us. I still have no idea why this happened, but as we're being pulled apart, I screamed K Pasol. <laughs> I, I do not speak Spanish. I, if I'm ever speaking Spanish, it's as a joke. I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to be funny. And I screamed K Pasol at them from each other. Uh, my buddies leave me down in um, food fight um, within. 20 minutes later, our, our work center supervisor, my buddy, uh, Muhammad, uh, comes up and he goes, um, Jamil Muhammad from Chicago, just nobody fucked with him. He was like the godfather on that boat. Um, and so uh, he walks up to us, he goes, you two are fucking idiots. And then he made us shake hands and we're like hugging each other like two minutes later. Like, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, the best part is that next day, uh, my buddy went on leave. So he had to get taken off the ship because he was getting married. Um, and when we got back into the port, his wife, who's just hilarious, classic Italian chick, um, she just goes, uh, she goes, Burke, you fucking asshole. The makeup artist charged me another hour to cover the shiner he gave my husband in the wedding photos. Oh, <laughs> so that one was pretty great. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, because it, it's always a good fight story if you're friends afterwards. That's how I look at it. But uh, I guess I and then can't... the high school nemesis one, I guess we can't ask you why you can't legally say his name, right? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know what it is? He's still on active duty right now. Okay. And I don't want any of his, uh, the, the sailors that he's leading to find out about this. Cause Got it. <laughs> some weirder shit's happened. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. And then your nemesis. Yeah. Uh, by the way, that my buddy, after, after losing a fight to me, you know, who looks like, uh, you know, I've been called Kevin James or the gay cowardly lion, depending <laughs> on whether I have a beard or not. Um, they, uh, he started training MMA after that. He goes, I'm never losing a fight to a chubby dude ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the nemesis kid was, uh, he was a new kid. He moved to uh, our town. I grew up in North Jersey and um, he moved to our town and he was like, uh, like su- he was the first that was political. Like we're talking, we're in seventh and eighth grade and this kid's trying to like talk politics and be like, Bush is a war criminal and shit. And we're like, dude, we're in seventh grade. We, we just started jerking off. Can we enjoy that for a minute? You know? Um, and he, he was just a total ass and um, came from, uh, I guess, a divorced family. It was a single mom thing. And uh, Do you go everybody... to school with Dave Smith? <laughs> <laughs> oh, close, man. Close. Uh, this dude would be on the, uh, the the far left of Dave's politics. Okay. <laughs> so, but um, anyway, you try to befriend the guy because even my mother was telling me, she goes, you know, it's really tough. There are new people here, blah, 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 whatever. And uh, it didn't help that this dude was, uh, he was a Persian dude. And he, he kind of, this is post 9-11. So, of course, anytime that kid's being an asshole, shut up, Bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Seventh grade, eighth grade kids, we're going to be dicks. Yeah, you should know it's coming if you look like that, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Before that, he goes, it has been Laden. I don't know. Is that an upgrade or a downgrade from Jafar just a year earlier? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, the kid, you try to befriend him, and then you can have a decent con- – and then you just realize, you're like, we're dealing with a borderline sociopath here because this kid will just lie out of his mind. It's crazy the lies that we're hearing him say. Um, he's a jerk, uh, completely unlikable. He's got a pension for like, he doesn't shower and stuff like that too. He, uh, he used to wear his underwear outside of his clothes, like as a rebellious statement. <laughs> yeah, it was a total jerk. Yeah. Um, that went on for years. And then post-graduation, I, I didn't see him again. And it was, uh, he actually, we were having an argument one time because he was being a dick and I was a good kid. My mom taught in the school, so I really couldn't get in any sort of trouble. So any 
class clown shit I had to do had to be like playful where I could talk my way out of it. Uh -huh. And uh, one day this kid uh, is just sipping a soda while I'm talking about something and he just spits the soda all over my pants. And I just, it, I still get angry about it because I couldn't, I couldn't punch him in the face like he deserved. And um, cause that's about as bad as it gets when a dude spits in your face and you do nothing about it. You know, Lewis mm -hmm. knows a little bit about that. I think that happened once. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But uh, anyway, um, I wind up seeing the kid once after we graduated high school because that was the best part. I was like, I will never see that kid ever again. I saw him as I was going into the military and um, he goes, oh, joining the military. Yeah, who saw that coming? And uh, like a total dick move. And anyway, uh, I never really saw him again after that. We were never friends on Facebook. He apparently- Wait, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So af that whole thing, when he spit on you and there was just no reaction, no repercussion, you just continued on with your day. He continued on with his day? screaming. Okay. Yeah, I was. I stood up and was screaming at him, but I couldn't lay a finger on him because my mom taught at the school and it was right. like, I was, you know, I, I really- I. I look back on that. I just should have decked them. There's no doubt about it, but, yeah. um, but we never, never kind of saw each other again. And, mm -hmm. um, I was excited about that. And then I, uh, <clears throat> apparently I saw his social media and that's the best thing ever. You guys have done that before, right? You find somebody and you see like what weird, um, makeover they gave themselves <laughs> as opposed to high school. Yeah. So this kid went from like punk rock and or, kissed uh you know bush is a war criminal stuff to uh all of a sudden he got like a, a haircut and he was trying to dress like jersey shore kids oh boy oh god yeah so now he's got like lakers jerseys on and he's uh you know talking about you know kobe bryant he's said yeah. he's this close to becoming the cliche uh persian dude with sunglasses <laughs> like a velvet uh, sweatsuit gold chain <laughs> it's a classic oh, douche so close. <laughs> <laughs> he owns a cologne stand at a turnpike stop um <laughs> But uh, it was crazy because you sit there and you're like, wow, this kid's not even rooting for teams that I would agree with him on. We just don't like each other. And uh, I found out not too long ago because then somebody was telling me, they're like, oh, dude, did you see his girlfriend, though? She's mad hot. And uh, like, look, we honestly think that he was such a, a repugnant human being that this might have been his first girlfriend. And uh, he used to lie and say that he was a lawyer all the time and he was going to law school and like no one could ever really prove it. And um, anyway, apparently this girl bought it for a while. Very, very cute girl, Arabic girl um, that he met out in Texas because he was from Texas and he moved back out there after um, high school. And uh, he winds up uh, with this girl. It's like he's one of those guys you can tell when they've never had a good looking girl before where every part of their social media is a picture of them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, so this wasn't even a love thing. This was look at what I bought kind of a thing. Right. And uh, anyway, this it gets dark here all of a sudden too, because uh, I guess eventually that guy's bullshit caught up to him, and she broke it off with him, and he went full incel, where you know I'm never gonna get a girl like this again, and blah blah blah. So, and um, so apparently all of a sudden everybody in my high school is talking on social media like this is insane. They're all like the it, it was like the uh, the rumor mill again, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just just kicking off like we were in eighth grade. Uh, the same day that this kid came in wearing his underwear outside of his clothes, everybody's like, did you see what so-and-so did? And, uh, you know, nobody wants to admit it, but we're all very curious about it still here in our uh, uh, 30s, early 30s. And um, apparently this kid is on the run as the main suspect in the murder of that girl and her sister. What? Yes. So this Which kid brings us to our next up. segment. <laughs> 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 so he's on the run uh wow and he's got a, a fake instagram account and it's all pictures of him and the girl and he's saying he's denying all the accusations and stuff and blah 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 and about two to three days later uh my buddy sends me a news article they found him dead uh he killed himself in a hotel room in texas so and that's I'm just sitting awesome there. Dude, it was nuts it, it, i'll tell you what i feel terrible for the two girls because that part's the tragedy sure but i I'm a little happy about mom. him, though. Oh, yeah. I told my mom. I was just like, remember that kid you told me to be nice to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could have just hit him. You let the universe take care of it, Ma. Now it's on you. If I punched him, he would have learned a lesson. And <laughs> You know what? He might have, man. That's kind of, although that's like a total sociopath. thing. If he did kill those girls and kill himself, that's like a very Ted Bundy thing, too. Right? Wasn't Ted Bundy like a little fucking... Uh, 
He thought himself to be a lawyer of sorts. No, but like Ted Bundy. No, this is like this, like incel type versus like Ted Bundy that never had problem getting women. It's like two different things. Yeah, that's true. Well, well said, too, because this kid was I would say the word wasn't around for us to use back then. But this would be incel for sure. Yeah, Hmm. those guys are freaking terrifying like there's there's been a few of like interrogations that you know i like my uh, my crime interrogations on youtube and i've seen i've seen so many of them when they interview there was one particular guy that was an incel and he took part in like uh, some bombing or something and just how matter of factly they speak about how like we like it's owed to us that like hot women sleep with us and not just any women, though. It has to be like hot women, which I think they call Becky's. And then like there's like regular like yeah, there's like Chad's. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that those are like the jocks. But it's like it has to be a hot woman, not like a gross yeah. woman. And that's what they deserve. It's fucking crazy. It's terrifying. I well, can't blame them for having taste. But there's got to be like a lot of a lot of autism has to be in that incel world now because like, you have like that level of disconnect from from empathy, but you could also figure out how to fucking like make bombs and orchestrate a mass murder. So, but I guess that's where you there, you have to figure out where the line is drawn between autism and like being a sociopath. Like where, where is the line Uh, drawn there? Because like people that are autistic, they just have a hard time picking up on social cues and understanding how other people feel, but they do have emotions where sociopaths don't. I would imagine that would lead to them not being able to, you know, uh, like mate for lack of a better term. Whereas also, like a sociopath could pretend to be the type of person that a woman might fall in love with. You know what I mean? Like the Ted Bundy. Yeah. Or Chris Watts. Which one was he again? He's the right. family annihilator. He's the one that killed his two little girls, put them in like the water the tower. Drum, thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> It's I've seen so many documentaries about him and he and he what happened with him is and then we'll move on. But like he killed his wife, killed his two little baby daughters like they were little. I mean, what's a more disgusting thing to do as a human being? And then he told the cops first. He's like, I don't know where I don't know where they went. Maybe. she And she was pregnant. The wife was also pregnant with their first son. And um, he's like, I don't know where they went. Maybe he, she's at her mom's house. Who knows? And then as he claims to break down and finally tell the quote unquote truth, he's like, all right, what really happened was my wife killed the two little girls and then I lost my temper and I killed her. So this piece of shit, not only does he like kill his whole family, but now he's blaming it on his pregnant dead wife. It's a smart move, though, if you're in his shoes. No one believed him. No one believed him. He's in jail forever. (laughs) What year was that? I will have to Google it. It wasn't that long. It wasn't that long ago. Then they have like all kinds of home, like home security footage that like, you know, kind of matches up with the past five years at most. I'm looking That's it up real quick. I wonder 2018. If he, like, watched, uh, 20, yeah. So he watched Shutter Island and then decided he goes, no, no, the wife did it. <laughs> yeah. I'm the good guy. Uh, okay. Well, I guess now we're in this dark, ugly place. We may as well move on to scary things. Let's double down. This is where we talk about um, weird, creepy, unexplainable, possibly paranormal experiences. Um, so I already explained this all to you in the email. So which, whichever direction you want to take this, it could be anything that freaked you out at the time it happened. OK, um, that's uh, that's awesome, too. Um, I don't have you guys ever. I'm a huge, huge history fan. That's like all we we do weird stories from history on uh, uh, my podcast a bunch. And there's been a couple unsettling ones we've like uncovered but uh the the creepiest thing was uh the the chick i was with in jacksonville me and her went down to she was convinced that she could uh she had esp so Mm -hmm. and there was a couple of strange times where some like legit stuff weird stuff did happen um she uh she walked into she was in tampa we were engaged we're gonna get married she walked into a wedding dress shop and uh i wasn't with her obviously and she goes um apparently she was like uh, flustered and like overcome with uh, the smell of flowers coming out mm-hmm. of the place. And she was like, this is so crazy. I, I, I'm smelling so many flowers in here. This is uh, like uncomfortable for me. Can you guys, can I go outside? Can I open up a window or something? They brought a fan out for her and everything. And she's with her mom and her mom's like thinking that she's having like, uh, she's going to faint or something. And, uh, 
anyway, it, the, they're talking to the person. She goes, oh, you know what it was? This uh, back in the day, this is in like St. Pete part of Tampa, which is like an old uh, community. A lot of old cool buildings and shit. And uh, apparently that used to be a funeral home. And she was, my, my girl at the time thought she was smelling the overwhelming amount of floral arrangements for the dead people. Wow. Huh. Yeah, so that one, that one was when I was like, maybe, maybe these fucking healing crystals, maybe there's something to what she's doing. <laughs> and that, that spoke me pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's you, you're skeptical, Maddie. Yeah, here's the thing. All right, I don't know this lady. She's probably a nice lady. You know, you were engaged to her, so she must have been nice at some point, right? I just always yeah, feel like at, the at person. <laughs> I just always feel like the person who has that kind of story. Like she could easily have just been like getting her dress, like, you know, measured out, whatever. And the lady's like, oh, by the way, this used to be a funeral home. She's like, oh, you know what? I do smell flowers. And then she just told everyone around her, like, oh, you got a headache or whatever. You Why know? would someone tell her that as she's trying on a wedding dress? Because women are just fucking, you just gossip. You know what I mean? You just want to talk about nothing that's important. So like, oh, there used to be dead people here. You're like, I didn't want to know that. I'm my fucking going to get married soon, lady, you know? She's like, I just want to share something with somebody and have them speak back to me. I got you hostage. I got needles. Well, she used to also, anytime I took her to like a historical place, because apparently I didn't know this prior to going down there, but mm -hmm. the three most haunted cities in America are New Orleans, mm -hmm. uh, Savannah, Georgia, and St. Augustine. And um, so we used to Where's St. Augustine? Augustine? Uh, just go. south of Jacksonville. Okay. Yeah, a cool town, man. Really fun down there. I used to take, well, that would be like our good like trip, go out there, go get dinner and have a few drinks and do the walking tours or whatever. So we did the same thing up in Savannah one time. And uh, she is like, she's she's almost trying to show this. Like it's, uh, you know, when uh, you guys know enough comics where it's like, uh, you can tell when like, oh, you're doing a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she would almost be setting up. She's like, oh, wow, that's so good. So this is like an old building, right? So there's probably like a lot of, a lot of history in this building right and all of a sudden the bartenders whether they're doing it because it's tourist stuff or not start telling her stories and then she'll be like i just have a feeling in this room i feel like something happened in here and it's like yeah the building's been up since uh, 1850 something's yeah. bound to have happened a lot of things have happened here <laughs> yeah but uh she it used to be fun for a while too because uh we do like the the walking um the haunted pub crawls in savannah and um Friggin', I'm I'm just tuning it out. I'm like you, dude. I'm a I'm a skeptic. I was like, whatever. This is we're selling tickets. We're selling you know drinks or whatever. And then we get back to the the bed and breakfast we were staying in, which was up since uh, pre Civil War. And uh, all of a sudden, I can't sleep. Like I'm having like a freak out reaction to something. I'm just like I, I can't sleep. I'm sitting, like I don't want to move. I'm, I didn't even sleep in the bed the rest of the night. I, I stood in a chair uh, or sat in a chair next to the TV and just kept watching Sports Center until she woke up and it was time to go. And I felt better the second we got outside of the city limits. And then my dad told me, he goes, uh, oh, um, that's crazy that you were in Savannah. Uh, your my, my great great grandfather that fought in um, for the Union. He was part of the Union force that invaded uh, Savannah. So then, you know, as a history guy, I'm telling that to the girl I was with. And she goes, oh, my God, you weren't welcome there because last time a Burke was there, it was because of this. You know, so <laughs> she liked spinning up her own. She wrote fan fiction for history, I guess. But uh, that that jarred me a little. So you you bought that she had this gift, if you will. I did not want to, but um, the only time that I ever, I'm I'm really I'm a pretty monogamous dude. Um, I had a, a, a girl at a. a it was, I was standing at my friend's house after a show and um, a girl who was at just like there, like, I guess a friend at the party or something like that. She pretty much, uh, I'm passed out on the couch and she straddled me and, uh, and was like taking pictures with me and stuff like that. And then she was trying to hook up with me and I didn't want to tell my ex about this at all because I just didn't want to give her a reason. I didn't do anything. So I had nothing to worry about. Um, and I didn't tell her anything about it. And then the next day I said, you know what I'm going to do? I, I, I'm just going to, I'll mention it to her. So I don't have a guilty conscience. And uh, I got back to the house and then she goes, I had the weirdest dream last night. that Some girl was like sitting on your lap and you guys were just having the best time. And I was like, all right, that's, that's three for three. Maybe there's something to this shit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And that's also just being a woman 
I think I I had a dream. <laughs> yeah, you just go around sitting on laps. Exactly. You know, <laughs> no, you know the fucking move. What's no, the, the best move? I mean, the lap dance, right? The strip club is centered around this move. That's not what I was talking about. I was talking about the other side of it, Maddie. About yeah, the being able spin move, <laughs> yes. about being able to like just tell when your boyfriend's up to no good or not up to no good, but something happens because like that. I had yeah. a dream one time ever that my boyfriend was cheating on me. And that was the one that I always tell the stories about that cheated on me the whole time that we were together. And mm-hmm. I kept dreaming that like he was with some girl with dark hair and I would always mention it like an idiot. I should have never opened my mouth. I should have just stored the information and, and kept it until I had enough to present to him. But that he ended up that's who he was cheating on me with the whole time was this short girl with dark hair. And I dreamt yeah. about it. I don't know. Yeah, all right. I don't know. It's just common. It's a common theme. Dark hair. Very common. Meant to cheat. Very common. The men that you associate with (laughs) cheaters. (laughs) I I Um, told my buddy at the plumbing shop that I was working at about that story one time. He's a a cool dude, black dude, grew up in Newark, whatever. So he's got like he's got a little there's some uh, funky words that will come out of his mouth every now and then. He'll use like a word substitution. But you know what he means, but it's not the right word. And I'm telling him the story. And he goes, he goes, Shit, KP, that's just that's just a woman's inhibition. They just know shit. <laughs> um, so overall, would you say that you believe in the in in the paranormal, like in in ghosts, in that type of stuff? Would you, would you believe in it? Um, I I would say in a healthy way, yes. To go full on, like, because I, I, I just know there's sometimes you start, and, and it's a lot of it is, you know, stuff you create in your own mind. But, um, like, I've been to enough weird, cool, old places that you can kind of get a feel for. It. There's a little hair on your arms that's there. Like, I, again, I'm a history junkie. I go to a battlefield or a fort, and I just get excited. Hmm. So, so visiting so many of those places, you've had feelings, but haven't actually like seen or heard anything unexplainable. No. Um, and, and I think it's because I, I absolutely avoid trying to look for it, too. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> um, when you said, OK, so now now my question is going back to earlier when you were talking about doing the morning glory. So reviewing that experience that you have had and knowing that other people have had similar experiences, do you view that as a spiritual experience or as your mind's just the, the chemical reaction in your brain just reacting in this like similar way that other people do in that in a similar circumstance. Cool. Uh, that very, very cool. And very, I'm excited to answer that. Uh, in just my take on it was, I think everyone's going to have a similar reaction just due to, I mean, mushrooms is what you're giving yourself food poisoning. Um, you know, so, but uh, what, what you're made of as a person comes to the forefront with that. So the first time I did mushrooms, it, it, I'll tell you what, it was the worst, I was in one of the worst depressions of my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was doing comedy. It was just in Jacksonville, Florida, which is depressing enough. Um, and then uh, we weren't sure what was happening. I had just gotten out of the military. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I'm getting, I had to pay for this wedding with this girl that I wasn't necessarily sure I was in love with still. And, uh, you know, we were getting resentful towards each other. She winds up ending it. And then my buddy goes, oh, well, if you're going to, you know, let's let's do this then why don't you um we had already made plans to eat mushrooms and he goes why don't you just stay here at the house for a little while while you get your shit together and uh where he lived you could be 45 minutes from uh jacksonville beach so you could be in you know literally staring at the ocean in about 40 minutes and uh we took the mushrooms and we drove down there and uh you know it was a a nice fun time coming up on we're just laughing in the car like kids and we walked down to the beach and you see the stars at night and the tide changing and the, the stars look like a, had a, a blueprint for how to build your own universe. Mm. And I sat there I was like, I'm the most depressed I've ever been. My grandfather just died. I'm living on a couch and I have all I got left out of my house is my dog. And uh, I'm just sitting there like having great childhood memories, thinking about how much I love my family and shit. And I was like, I'm the luckiest guy. And this is, so if you're, if you got a lot of bad shit going on, mushrooms is going to take you maybe in a different place. But anytime I've done, it's just always been like, this is a, uh, it's six months of therapy condensed into cow shit. Yeah. So you haven't had, you haven't had what like they would classify as a bad trip. 
not on mushrooms. I, I had one rough go on acid that was um, amusing. The morning glory, uh, apparently that is, like I was saying earlier, that that is what's supposed to happen on morning glory. That's why no one does it. Oh, a bad trip. It's supposed to give you a bad trip. Yeah, like it, the part of the process is like some, confronting some demon. I think that's why the Native Americans would use it because that's like your spirit quest. Like, did you freak out, man? Did you freak out? Yeah. Huh. There was something about that. You never had like a like a moment on mushrooms where it was like, uh oh, I gotta I gotta deal with some shit here. No, I'm pretty. Uh, I'm a, a pretty happy dude. Um, yeah, I'm not. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, well, I was saying the truth to my favorite thing was uh, uh, he's since passed, but uh, my, my I had a 70 pound slobbering bulldog that mm -hmm. loved it when I would do English. He, uh, he was uh, English American mix. Oh, so, all right. Yeah, he's a piece it. of work, man. His name was Eddie Vetter. He was good people. Um, <laughs> but he uh, he would love it when I'd be on mushrooms. I would just be sitting there petting him. And then like about an hour would go by and you just see like a, like all this fur would be at the, the on the carpet now because I just I pretty much like groomed him by myself. Yeah. <laughs> and so he loved that, man. And it was uh, that was always good times, man. I, I think planning. For that, that's another part, too, is that I, I understand mushrooms. Well, I was coached well uh, by right. people who had done it before. So it wasn't like, let's do this at a party and see what happens. It was like, yeah. don't don't eat anything. We're going to have a glass of orange juice an hour in and uh, we'll drink beer afterwards so you don't get weird. Hmm. Yeah, I'm due for one. So I'm I'm gearing up. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. When it's you guys do when you guys do stuff like that, you've never done it. I've never done a psychedelic. No. I like I'm I, I want to and I'm fascinated by other people's experiences. I'm just scared. And I, it's because I don't like the feeling of being high. Like I don't like weed. I don't, it's, it's just this, like that initial feeling at the beginning, that like whooshy feeling that I say, and no one ever understands what I'm saying, but I just, I don't like that, that head feeling at the beginning. And people have told me like Zach Amigo has told me, and I said this a thousand times, but he said that the feeling of being on mushrooms is like a hundred times like more of feeling high from weed and that yeah. stayed in my mind forever. And that's what makes me so scared to try it. I don't know if that's super accurate though. Like it, it can, it can be right. But there's like different parts of it and you could like, you could ease in, you know what I mean? You get the chocolates, you could dose yourself in, or we know people who, I, I mean, well, we know people who can make capsules of mushrooms. They can dose it for you so you can you know. ease yourself in. You don't got to go fucking hog wild and eat five grams and, you know, go into a different universe. You can just have a little bit, see how it does for you. Microdosing. I think microdosing mushrooms is the greatest thing that anyone can ever do. And obviously, I'm, you know, it's been a while since I've been in doctor school, but uh, <laughs> microdosing mushrooms will get me like my head straight. No problem. Lickety split. I guess I'm doing it again, actually. Yeah, I like that. I would say this to you, too, Shan, is that um, with uh, I, I actually don't like marijuana. Like, I, I have nothing against it. I want it to work. Yeah. Um, but and, and, like the worst part for me with uh, first of all, you can't sleep on acid, so you can't go to sleep and wake up still high. You just don't sleep on uh, edibles. The worst feeling in the world is to wake up. Uh, and the edible is still in and you're like, well, shit, now my morning's fucked. So I, I genuinely don't like marijuana for the most part. No, no judgment against it. But mushrooms is you got a four hour commitment. That's all you got to do. So if you can sit down and watch the Irishman, you also could have had time for mushrooms. Oh, do not watch the Irishman on mushrooms. I mean, that'd be the worst experience ever to fucking happen to mankind. That's <laughs> I can't watch anything on mushrooms. I got to go on like a hike or something or, you know. I can't, I, know, I can't I, watch the Irishman on anything. <laughs> I had in my mind that mushrooms were like a six to eight hour thing. Is that acid that I'm thinking of? Acid can be even longer. I, I've had like a good, uh, I've had a good like 12, 15 hour run on acid before. Um, so that's when you got to take it. Uh, you know, you got to have nothing on your schedule the next day. Mushrooms, you could be like, hey, it's uh, I'm looking to have a fun Sunday, but not call out of work on Monday. Yeah. But that also has to do with how much you take at one given moment. You got to remember, too. So if you take a little bit, your body's going to go through it in less time. You know, it's not going to take fucking. You can ease into it is my point. You don't have to yeah. fucking go hog wild. Did I say that already? Maybe it sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> you did just say it. I'll get there. It's like I keep saying, like, I have to, like, continue. I have to keep thinking about it steadily for a little bit to, like, mentally prepare myself. And then maybe I'll try the micro 
a microdose just to understand what the feeling is going to be because I have no idea. Yeah. When I did the two times I did it, I eased into it. And I just kept having more and more and then I hit it and then leveled off, but I didn't have like a really bad experience either time. Um, really rough, quickly, rough patches. we are yeah. we're over time yet again. And I just want to ask one final question, KP, and I didn't prepare you for this one. But what do you think happens when we die? Ooh, uh, fair question. Um, I heard a couple cool theories on that. Uh, and it's just that you can have enough brain activity. Uh, so uh, kind of like what they say with DMT and stuff like that, that um, uh, what can feel like a lifetime. So on that, I'll tell you what, on that, uh, the, the morning glory thing to tie it back in, I felt like I lived about five years of my life in that one evening. Mm -hmm. So I, if that's what, when you die, it feels like, then you're going on some crazy journey. It's going to take forever, but then maybe it could just be 15 minutes of your life. So, uh, if that is what our idea of heaven is, then I'm pretty stoked about it. If there's an actual heaven, it's going to be very curious to figure out who, I don't want heaven to be like the cellar where I got a fucking audition <laughs> and my friend can't get in or something like that. <laughs> you know i just remembered at this very second that in my dream sometime recently over this past week there was a moment where i i don't remember the 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 context of this but it was like presented to me in a way of what the feeling was going to be like when we die and because you know I, i've dreamt about being in hell before i have crazy there's a lot going on in my mind you're fucking <laughs> so, nuts i know this is why i need to do mushrooms i think it needs to settle down it's craziness up here but so in this moment it was just like and i felt the feeling for a moment of just like not just like family members that you would see afterwards but it was just like a feeling of I mean, let's say, for example, that there is more than just this lifetime, that it's kind of like all of the other souls or beings that ever meant anything to us are just together. And you're feeling that. Do you ever feel the feeling of you, you guys are guys? So I don't know if you're going to know this, but like when you feel love in, in a moment so yeah. much in that your vagina, like, I'm lost. <laughs> that brings like tear it like brings tears to your eyes and then like when you have the tears it kind of maxes out the emotion because then you're just stopping yourself yep. from crying so this is like the so much love that it like surpasses that crying yep. part is what i felt in the dream and that that's what it was going to feel like afterwards okay all right yeah yeah yeah. I feel, i'm on board i feel what okay. you're saying pick it up what you're putting down kid if, I mean, if that's the case, I'm <laughs> here's a one here a freaky great. thought that I got to fucking live with for the, at least at, or maybe at most the next fucking five, seven months. So I'm like, oh, you know, how I always think I'm dead. I'm like, yeah. what? What if my wedding day? Right. Oh, you're gathered by all your loved ones. Like, that's it. That's the day you're dead. And that's like your portal into the fucking afterlife. Like, here you go, faggot. You're doing DMT now. <laughs> Okay, wait. Oh shit. <laughs> so I KB, followed that and I'm still uncomfortable. I am I am I didn't completely follow it. And just so that you know, it just in case. So it's several times, and, and this happens almost every episode where Maddie takes a moment to think that this is all a simulation in his mind, that yeah. we don't exist, that he doesn't exist, and that he's already dead. And I've we've actually been able to convince him more than once that he may actually <laughs> be dead. <laughs> More than I once. really am the fucking dog you <laughs> pretend to throw the stick, you know? <laughs> oh, oh, oh no, I'm dead. I'm dead again. We did it two <laughs> times. I mean, like back to back. They were within a couple <laughs> weeks of each other, and I fell for it hard both times. <laughs> and when I had to we call had, people, text everyone we, I knew, I'm like, my we, life. We got one on on the show, which was made me really happy. Yeah, that was rough. That was okay, rough so so we so you're saying that the the wedding day. Yeah. Is the day that you like cross over? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. Okay. I'm like, oh, that's going to be the day that like I realize I'm dead, you know, or that I'm in a DMT trip because that's like part of what I think is actually happening around me right now is maybe I smoke DMT in some other fucking dimension. And now I'm in this one hanging out with you guys. Or I just heard a bunch of people say oh, that you live a lifetime different. in it, you know, so I don't fucking know. What did you say, KP? I might have read that there. I, I like what he's doing, but I, I went down like um, like a James Joyce Dubliners kind of a vibe where uh, he was saying like, oh, on your wedding day, you're surrounded by all your loved ones. And, and they make you, you die, do DMT. You'll be surrounded by all. <laughs> There's no DMT in Dubliners. Otherwise, I would have read it quicker. Um, but, uh, no, 
so you're dead um that you're gonna be in a church you know for your wedding and all your loved ones are going to be around you and the next time all those loved ones are around you in a church is your funeral oh yeah well that's why we're not doing it at church we're gonna fucking have it a one and done with the fucking the church here on out you know fair enough i'll be dead <laughs> That was really that was a way sadder way to think of it. <laughs> that bummed me out. <laughs> that bummed me out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Okay. I think I said it's very Irish. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So we are 15 minutes over. I'm sorry. I hope that you haven't gotten to your destination. We're just keeping you in the parking lot now. Are you still driving? Uh, I am. I, I can see Philly. All right. It's there. <laughs> so we're good. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to wrap. We're going to do a quick round of plugs and we'll get out of here. What would you like to plug KP? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It was great to talk to both of you. This was super fun. Um, I'm, uh, you can check out my podcast. It's called Adam, uh, American Loser Podcast. Me and my dad, we tell weird stories from American history, stuff you've never heard of. If you thought history was boring in high school, it's because you had boring teachers. So let me fix that. Um, uh, and then also, I'm very excited. Champ, it's okay. I can plug. You're the first place I get to plug this. Um, I'm going to be recording my first album on uh, September 11th, which is my birthday. Uh, <laughs> we're recording Lucky that. Lucky you. Be at, exactly. And it's uh, you know, a different kind of tragedy occurring this time. But, uh, but I'm very excited. It's going to be actually the, uh, at the, um, the Black Box Theater located next to where they filmed Clerks. So it's very Jersey-centric, Kevin Smith uh, built a little theater over there and I just got confirmed that uh, we're doing that September 11th uh, ticket link is going to be live shortly. Uh, hit me up at uh, at KP Burke sucks over on Instagram and KP Burke on Facebook. And uh, I, I love you all. Thank you. Awesome. Odd, wait, I'm looking at the calendar really quickly. Maddie, maybe we can go and see that. You hold on. You want, you want me to go outdoors on se uh, September 11th? Like, <laughs> oh, like I don't sorry. think another tragedy is going to happen. <laughs> That's and then so no one's going to give a shit because the original <laughs> September 11th, they're going to be like, so what? Maddie fucking died. This is independently produced, though, so the Jews aren't behind this 9-11. <laughs> I'm in. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Maddie, what are you going to plug? Uh, uh, the, the stuff. Uh, Twitch and Instagram, Jester Skulls and Twitter, where I'm Dr. Ding. -D Still, I survived. I survived my latest almost getting expelled from uh, Twitter again for hoping the governor of Oregon chokes to death on her mask, which I still mean and hope, by the way. Uh, I'm Dr. Ding Daddy on there because Jack Dorsey's a comic cunt. Please don't attach your shit to the show, Maddie, and then the, it's going to be a whole thing. What do you mean? We don't, want, we don't want anybody to die. Are you not allowed to hope people die anymore? I thought I mean, this is America. There are, better, there are better outcomes. Like There are, more, there are be better punishments than death, I feel like. Whatever that is, whatever worse is worse than death, I hope happens to the governor of Oregon, who, whose name I forget right now. Um, <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram at Shannon Lee 6982. Wherever you listen to the show, you can watch it live for free every single Tuesday at 530 p.m. Eastern at gasdigitalnetwork.com slash live. Actually, next week we will be live from the studio. We're going to start doing it one time a month. Uh, so we're going to be back in the studio, Maddie and I, maybe a guest, maybe not. I still don't really know what's happening, but we are going to be in the studio. Um, uh, the best way to support the show is to go to gasdigitalnetwork.com, use promo code TTI. You'll get a one week free trial plus access to all the other amazing shows on the network, every single episode that we've ever done, live chat episodes sooner, all that good stuff. Um, and it's risk free for one week. So do that. Podcastmerch.com for t shirts, hoodies, and mugs. If you have a story that you want to share for bad dates, bad things, or scary things, where is my bell? Oh, no, I got one. Wait, no, 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 no. Uh, if you have a story to share, send it to the thing is podcast. No, no, wait, wait. <laughs> there we go. At hey, gmail.com. <laughs> My cat jumped up right at that moment. Um, and if you listen on iTunes or YouTube, make sure to rate, review, and tell a friend. Tell two friends. Um, and that's very important. And we pick one lucky reviewer every so often to get a free piece of merch. I think that's it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you again, KP, for being on the show. Uh, we'll be back next week. Bye, guys. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.